Hi, my name is Francisco Martin Rico. I'm from Rey Juan Carlos University, and the title of this talk is Using Open Deep Learning Toolkits in ROS and ROS2. This talk is uh, organized in these points. Uh, first of all, we will talk about us, about our research uh, lab. Uh, secondly, we'll talk about how to integrate deep learning uh, in cognitive architecture in social robots. The third, in the third point, we will explain uh, what is ROS and why ROS is useful to uh, democratize uh, this kind of technology. Uh, in the fourth point, we will present the deep learning toolkit we are using in our robots and we will finish with some conclusions. The Intelligent Robotics Lab is a research lab at Rey Juan Carlos University. It's a, a young laboratory from 2018 and our research line on mobile robotics, artificial intelligence, cognitive architecture, social robotics, and robotics middleware. Uh, we, we are experts in ROS and ROS2 development, and we participate in several robot as advisors and developing uh, the, the projects. And we participate also in, in several competitions like uh, Robocad at Home, SciDog, and European Robotics League. We, where we use uh, deep learning toolkits to carry out the, the test beds. A cognitive architecture organizes the perception and actuation of the robot around some concepts related to how humans think and act. The main characteristic of this type of architecture is that they are centered on knowledge. We have developed a symbolic representation of the world based on a graph called knowledge graph. All the perception are integrated into this graph, making geometric and symbolic relation between the elements. The robot decides what to do based on this high-level representation. Another cognitive aspect of this architecture is the attention skill and the ability to predict the effects of the actions. We achieve this by using a symbolic planner called Plansys2. All the components of this architecture are implemented in ROS2. We use some deep learning toolkits in this architecture to generate the dialogue with humans as uh, this is a, ro a social robot, we use dialogue flow. For perception, we have used open pose and deep object pose. We cannot resolve complex tasks using only deep learning or informal learning. The last decision in the autonomous vehicles field demonstrate that it is not possible to carry out complex tasks only by these technologies. Deep learning is a valuable so uh, resource that must be integrated into more complex architecture as information extractors to be useful in robots. In this video, we can see this software in action. The robots must detect the state of each table before getting an order for clients. We can see how navigation, attention, dialogue, and perception work together to achieve the goal of this testbed. The robot has a GPU in which we run the deep learning toolkit used to perceive. Why is ROS so relevant in this talk? ROS, Robot Operating System, is a middleware to develop application for robots that has become a de facto a standard in robotics. The first ROS implementation was as part of the STATE project that finished in 2006 at Stanford. Contrary to usual, this software outlived the project that funded and Willow Garage continued to develop this middleware. In 2012, the Open Source Robotics Foundation continued this task. ROS is currently now and used worldwide by organizations, companies, and universities. ROS has released 
15 version from 2010 to a year ago. Each version has its own name, which has emer emerged from the consultation with the community, and its own logo, which decorates t-shirts and office in dozens or hundreds of laboratories. All of this empowers the ROS community. ROS has not become what is today because it is technically superior to other alternatives. The secret of this success is that it has created a huge community of developers who collaborate to advance this middleware and improve it day by day. Perhaps one of the factors that have contributed to this has been its federal organization. Each contributor organization or company has its own repositories and contribute to the community the community by following a series of standard mechanisms for developing and packaging software. Another factor for, for this success is the choice of open standard and a clear open source philosophy. Suppose by democratizing software we understand its free access as well as access to documentation, tutorial and participation in forums where users give their opinion and debate about part of it. This allows unlimited access to all resources it offers, wherever you are and whoever you are. In that case, ROS is an example of democratizing an area of knowledge, in this case, robotics. As you can see in this video, ROS has moved dozens of robots and a multitude of projects an application during the last decade. ROS2 is the new version of ROS, which has evolved with new features to adapt to the needs of the industry and increasingly demanding application in aspects such as security, reliability, robustness, or real-time. This new design relies on DDS, which already provides you with some of these features. Also, it supports more operating systems besides Linux, and they have better support for more programming languages. Signed 2017, there are, there are already seven versions, the last one a few months ago. Returning to the deep learning toolkits, we will review those that we have used in our group this year in the next slides. These toolkits are now available for free use with lots of documentation, tutorial, and examples. For sure, when we talk about the topic of this workshop, the democratization of deep learning, these toolkits have contributed significantly. ROS has enhanced this, encapsulating libraries and processes within ROS2 nodes, providing a standard way of using them and integrating them in robotic application. As we will see, many of these toolkits have associated ROS packages, usually provided by community users. The first one is YOLO, also called Darnet. In this video, we can see it running in real time.
YOLO detection are bounding boxes with a probability associated and a class. Darnell ROS is the packet that contains the ROS node that provides its functionality. This node subscribes to the camera images and publishes the bounding boxes with the detected classes and probabilities. Our group has contributed to this repo with the ROS2 version. We have developed a package that uses this info, combined with a 3D camera, to produce voxels from these bounding boxes. The problem here is to separate the background in the bounding box from the detected object. We did this by using a recursive algorithm that starts from the center and removes the background using depth. This worked well in most cases, but we can have a lucid detection if the object is not continuous or the center uh, has some gaps. This node is available in our organization repo at GitHub. The evolution of this software is using YOLACT instead of YOLO. YOLACT segments the pixel of the image of its detection instead of an imprecise bounding box. Yolat ROS is the package that contains the ROS node that encapsulates Yolat. There is also a ROS2 version of this software. As we need the 3D information of the detection that we code as an optomap, we use a 3D camera game, obtaining the 3D position of each pixel. The extraction of the coordinates of the detection is not direct. Bad alignment in the frontier points can produce points in the background. To solve this, we have used a couple of alternatives that make this process more robust. In our experience, when we need to detect only people and we need accurate information about the orientation or the position of any part, YOLAC maybe is not the right candidate. OpenPose is a software that uses deep learning to detect the skeleton of people. It can even detect fingers, as you can see. Once again, we have combined this info with a 3D camera to transfer these key points from 2D to 3D. This is very useful, for example, to detect the person's orientation while following. All these toolkits make the detection in image coordinates, and we need to use a post process to get the 3D position. In the last RoboCap, we also needed to obtain the orientation of the objects to determine the grab areas during their manipulation. To achieve this, we started using part of the NVIDIA Deep Learning Framework, in this case DOW, Deep Object Pose, gave us the object's position and orientation. To train the neural network with the object that we had to manipulate, we use the NVIDIA Deep Learning Data Chasing Dataset, NDDS, which produces hyperrealistic synthetic sense in which the position or orientation of the objects were already known. This allowed us to avoid labeling a dataset by hand, but instead created many different sense with the labeling was automated. Well, in this talk, we have presented how we use deep learning toolkits in our cognitive architecture. 
The key, in our case, is using Rust to integrate the toolkits with the rest of the software. The Rust community has done a lot of work democratizing the software for robots, and we have seen how the Rust users have done the same with the Open Deep Learning toolkits. Thanks for your attention, and I hope that you have enjoyed with this presentation.